There was a former Montreal Canadian scout who's been telling everyone for a while that Shane Wright was not number one on his list. And he's been telling us for a while that Yuri Slavkowski was gaining a lot of steam and he would be the number one guy. This former scout has been taking a lot of heat from the Montreal Canadiens fan base. For whatever reason, they weren't buying what he was selling. Yesterday, Bob McKenzie came out with his list after consulting with some NHL scouts, and he too has Uri Slavkowski at number one. Now, all of a sudden, nobody's ridiculing him anymore. I'm wondering, did anyone apologize? We'll find out. Slavkowski at one. Is he way ahead of Wright at two? Is anyone else close to number two? We'll get his thoughts. We'll break it down. Grant McCagg of Recruits, Recruits Hockey and Recruits.ca joins me on the SICK podcast. I'm Marinaro, and after buying all my it's all going to be all right shirts and hoodies and no pain, no shame, today I'm saying, is this a joke? Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. The Sickest Montreal Canadiens Podcast. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Welcome. The menu no longer surprises me at Lacage, and then I know when I'm going back. I'm going back on Thursday, July 7th, because the Sick Podcast is going to have the sickest draft party that you've ever seen at Lacage at Centre Bell or here in Montreal that Montreal has ever seen. Let's put it that way. Thursday, July 7th, we're going to have it at Lacage Centre Bell. RSVP as soon as you can, because spaces, of course, are limited. And brought to you by 8.6 Beer Intense by Nature, the beer for those who follow their instincts the way I did and live their passions the way I do in order to make their mark the way I make my mark. All right. Joining me right now, former scout of the Montreal Canadiens, Graham McCagg, what's going on? Hey, Tony. Well, I'm just uh, relaxing after uh, six hard, intense weeks of getting that draft guide done. Yeah, his uh, Twitter up, uh, Twitter handle is up on our screen right now. You can see a Grant McCagg, M-C-C-A-G-G. Uh, if you want to tweet him, he's been receiving a lot of tweets over the last month or two. <laughs> he's been telling us all along that Shane Wright was not number one on his list, and he was taking a lot of heat. Now, all of a sudden, Bob McKenzie comes out with his list. Shane Wright's not number one on his list either. My first question to you, Grant McCagg of Recruits Hockey and Recruits.ca is... Have people apologized? <laughs> to be honest with you, Tony, I'm not uh, not reading a lot of comments to uh, to uh, anything that I post right now because uh, there's a lot of vitriol and um, trying to keep the white noise away. And I think you know you, you know what it's like there uh, on Twitter. Uh, things can get a little toxic and stuff. So uh, if people have apologized, it certainly hasn't been directly. And I haven't seen any apologies, and I don't know if they've been apologizing in comments that I've been making, but no, no apologies. All right. Now, um, how many times have you seen Shane Wright play? Because that's the number one question. When people don't like a scouting reporter, they don't like what they see or they don't like what they hear. The first thing they'll tell you is, how many times did you see him play? So I know you've seen him play a bunch, but I'll ask you, how many times have you seen him play? Yeah, I've seen him play more than uh, any other top-rated prospect uh, be- before. He, he was just down the road in Kingston, and uh, because because of COVID, they uh, they only played Eastern Conference teams. So they were in Ottawa six times this year, and I saw him alone just in Ottawa on six occasions and a couple other times live. And I watched, I would say, somewhere between 60 and 70 of his games this year on, on video. So... I've never scouted a prospect more than I scouted right. At what point 
were you starting to ask yourself or you were starting to say to yourself, I don't see what others are seeing? Well, I mean, I wasn't alone with that. It was uh, NHL scouts have been, uh, you know, I sat with them at games because they're, they're friends uh, uh, right from November on. And we'd be looking at each other and like, why is he not putting out effort out there, especially away from the puck? He was just a lot of games where he just, uh, you know, he, it, basket hanging, uh, staying by the, the opponent's blue line. Not not coming back, uh, not coming back, and um, with any effort, and it was basically from November on that uh, that all of us were starting to have concerns that there was something wrong. All right, he didn't have any bark or what? Because uh, at least your dogs do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're uh, we just had someone come home there, so that's the all right. It's all good. This is the yeah. beauty of podcasts. I love it. All <laughs> yeah. right, um, at the combine. He was asked about his lack of engagement at times. And he said, there's no lack of engagement. I'm a very methodical player. I'm a deep thinker on the ice. I'm very economical. Uh, probably doesn't waste energy when he doesn't have to. The answer is great. But I guess you're not buying it, huh? Well, when the other team's leaving, you know, the, their own zone, and heading back and you're standing behind the net, that's not methodical or thinking that's, you know, that's not competing. I mean, I understand at times. Yes. Uh, okay. If you think that the, uh, that your own team's going to get the puck and be in good position for an offensive chance, I get it then. And there were times, you know, he, he's a very smart player. I don't dispute that, but when, uh, you know, no, none of your teammates are near the puck or about to get the puck and you're standing back, uh, not moving your feet on the back check, that has nothing to do with deep thinking or uh, being methodical. It's lazy is what it is. Those who are fans have compared him to a Patrice Bergeron slash a Ryan O'Reilly. Those players are 200-foot players. Those players get back all the time. In the NHL playoffs, every single center uh, has to get back. Shane Wright, the way he played this season, would not have been would not have played center in the NHL these past playoffs. Uh, NHL coaches would not have had him anywhere near the ice as a centerman in the NHL in these past playoffs. So he he's got a lot to learn. He's gonna have a he's gonna have a wake up call in training camp this year in, in the NHL. Where um, does he make the NHL? What's best for his development? Let's say he goes, regardless of where he goes, one, two, three. Uh, what's best for his development? Because based on what you're saying, if he wasn't ready for the NHL in the playoffs in May and June, I would imagine you don't think he's going to be ready for the National Hockey League come September, October. Well, I think he wasn't ready to play center. There's a difference there, you know. Um, I think he could, he's starting to wing like Taylor, Tyler Sagan did. That's what I envision that he'll start out because first overall, second overall picks that are, you know, that, that are as touted as him, the, the likelihood is that he will start in the NHL. But I, I really do think unless, again, I mean, it's possible unless he trans, transforms his game, uh, he'll probably start a, as a winger and then move over to, to center eventually or perhaps – Perhaps he's not a center in the NHL. I mean, it, it, it has crossed my mind. We'll see. He's going to have to change his game to play a top two center role in the NHL, especially in the playoffs. All right. But, you know, most scouts, I know you said you talked to scouts, but most scouts have touted Shane Wright as the best of the uh, 2004 draft class, probably for, you know, four or five years or whatever it is, right? So is it is it not possible, and I guess it is, but, you know, is it not possible that, you know, Shane Wright's the best player who had probably not a great last four or five months compared to Slavkowski, who got hot, but it ends there. Because this thing can go either way, right? It could be Slavkowski getting better and better, Shane Wright dipping a little bit, or it could be one player's been so good for so long, and you know what? Maybe just the pressure of going number one got to him. Maybe the fact that he was playing with an inexperienced team, maybe the fact that he was playing with not a great team, just affected his game. 
I've heard a hundred excuses, Tony, and those are all excuses. The Kingston wasn't a great team because he wasn't great. Like a franchise players, players that go first overall in the CHL make their teams better. And he didn't do that this year, especially in the playoffs. He, uh, Kingston has like five or six players in their top six that are either signed by the NHL or drafted by the NHL. So there's no lack of talent there. And I don't buy that excuse. And I've heard, I've heard that and a thousand others. And it just doesn't hold water with me. Uh, you know, Connor McDavid, did he not make his teammates better when he was first overall? Or, I mean, Alexei Fren Lafreniere, up and down the list, all of these guys, uh, you know, it, it, you didn't hear these excuses for him. Um, as far as the, the, the thing that worries me is that he was great when he was 15, 16, and uh, he wasn't great when he was 18. And every player in the past where that's been the case never ended up being as good as, as they were touted to be at 16. Like Angelo Esposito is a great example. Um, Neil Yakupov's another one. Uh, Nolan Patrick. Nolan Patrick scored 100 points when he was 16, 17. Then the next season, he was about, you know, the same point production. And it's a very similar path with, uh, with Wright. And what usually happens or what has happened is other guys, these guys mature early, 16, 15, they're, they're mature already. And then other guys catch up with them. Now, it may end up that that's not the case, but past history and from what we've seen and what, what I saw from right this year and his competitive nature, like how he competes on the ice, I don't see him progressing, improving in the future as much as, as a player like, like Lafkowski. I, yeah. I think what you see is what you get, uh, which is still very good. He's going to score a lot of points. He's smart. He's got great you know, NHL skill level, but... Is he going to be a uh, a difference making top top line center? I just I don't think that's going to happen. Grant, if you played in a league that was canceled last year due to COVID, it obviously you know hurt your development, and I think that's what happened with Shane Wright. Right, missing on a big year year and a half of development has set him back because that could be a reason why you probably end up taking two steps back. Could it not? Yeah. Well. Uh, he uh, 75% of the players in the OHL, like Wyatt Johnson didn't play last year. Mason McTavish hardly played last year. Those guys improved uh, by leaps and bounds, but by not playing last year, like how, how come all these other guys that didn't play either got so much better and he didn't, why is it different? Why is there an excuse for right? But not for the, like, again, that comes across to me as an excuse. He didn't spend that off year getting stronger and quicker and faster, obviously, and these guys did. Well, is that going to change in the future? Usually, you know, uh, that, that that's not the case. It, it's it's in it's just that he's not he's not going to be as hard a worker as other guys uh, off the ice. And again, it, it may end up not being the case, but as a general rule, you, you know, you look at that and you're trying to project the future, and you say, okay. I don't know that he's going to improve as much as other guys at, at the top of the draft. So you're drafting for three, four years down the road. It, it, it ends up concerning you. A shout out to sportbuffshop.com. Use code 615 for 15% off on all of their items, like our sick merchandise. Like, is this a co uh, is this a joke or double shift your best players or some of my, uh, some of my favorite uh, t-shirts, of course uh, shop for all of your sports license apparel, including hoodies, caps, and t-shirts, of your favorite teams from all major leagues as well. All right, okay. Um, you run your own independent service, which is Recruits Hockey. Recruits.ca is the website. And you put up your 2022 NHL draft guide, correct? Yep. All right, so with your permission, I'd like to bring up, you have your top 120. I'm going to bring up your top 30, Okay. Well, yeah, I uh, was you know alerted what? to this ahead of time, Tony. Uh, you know what? No problem. I got rid of it. Okay, no one saw it. All okay. right. Okay. Go buy his. Uh, go buy his draft guide. Okay. How much does it go for? Seventeen ninety nine. Seventeen ninety nine. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Encourage him. All right. He works hard for it. Um, Certainly. You ask me about some. You know. Well, uh, you can say where a few guys are 
right? Yeah, well, Uri Slavkowski is number one. All right, okay, so yeah. let's talk about Uri Slavkowski, who's at number one, and he, he obviously caught a lot of people's attention with his play at the Olympics first, going up against men. He was only 17 years old. He just absolutely exploded at the Winter Olympics, and then everyone was looking forward to see what he was going to do at the World Championships, uh, going up against, you know, a lot of lot of NHLers. And he did real well there, too. So what did you see from him? Uh, he checked off every box. Like uh, a kid his size to have the, those puck skills and skating skills at, at his age, uh, you know, uh, incredible. And um, he competes. He's very smart. Like uh, Craig Ramsey is a coach of, of the, you know, and he's a, he's a great coach, and he's he's developed uh, Slovakia. I mean, they won a, a medal at the Olympics. He he just he's I have such respect for him, and he ended up playing Slavkowski twenty minutes a game, like more than any other player on the team. An eighteen year old kid. And wow. He, I mean, it just it told you just how smart he was as well. Had him out on the penalty kill, and uh, his hockey sense is something that surprised me. I didn't know that he was that smart. His vision is excellent too. It's got a great shot, um, strong as an ox. I mean, there's just not any holes in his game that I see. And it, it, it's very exciting. I think not only do I think he's the safest pick, I think he's got the most upside. Well, Bob McKenzie said that, you know, Slavkowski won versus right. It was like a photo finish. But knowing that the position of center carries so much more weight than the position of winger, it leads me to believe that scouts think that Slavkowski is not only a little bit better than Wright, but probably significantly better. That's a great point, Tony. Um, I mean, you factor in their position before you make your rankings. And if you've got a winger ahead of a center on your final rankings, uh, there's a there's a really good chance that you think it, you definitely think he's a better player. If they were anywhere close, uh, they, they'd have the center ahead. So that that's bang on. So after watching the Winter Olympics and watching the World Championships, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that Juraj Slavkowski is most NHL ready right now. I mean, uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it'd be pretty crazy to say otherwise. There is something that scares me. And I'm going to tell you what that is. I've read uh, on several occasions that he has several very, very tall members of his family. He's 6'4", there's some who are 6'6", six, six, there's some who are 6'7", and many believe that he's going to still fill out and grow and probably hit 6'7". If he does, how many 6'7 dominant wingers in the history of the National Hockey League do you know? <laughs> yeah, so you're saying he might be the next Mike McCarron. Yeah. No, no I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying is if he was <laughs> seven and he would have been a defenseman a la Owen Power, a la Zdeno Chara, guys yeah. that are six seven, six eight, six nine. I don't have a – you know what? He, Victor Hedman's a big man. He could be really good. But if he becomes a six foot seven winger, I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever seen a six foot seven winger who was great before. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, maybe he grows three more inches, Tony. I, I do know that – most scouts, if they tell you that, you know, if, if you tell them, oh, I think they're going to grow another three inches, that, you know, they, they put them up one more notch, you know. <laughs> I mean, great, you know. Uh, like, I don't, it's not like he's going to do a, a eight-inch growth spurt and, and then be uncoordinated and have to grow into his body. I hear you, yeah. Two or three inches when you're 225 pounds already at 6'4", you know, that's the, what, 5% you know, increase or 10% or whatever it happens to be. So, yeah, I mean, if he grows some more, I think great, actually. So that's a power forward in the making that we're talking about or, uh, you know, a power forward with some finesse. Like if you would give me a comparable past or present, you would say who to, for your ice Lovkowski? Well, I mean, I'm not saying he's the next Yarimer Jagger, but that type, you know, that type of player that you it's just impossible to get the puck from him. You know, wow! Uh, skill, um, size, use of size. You know, no, he's not the next Jeremy Jaeger. Jeremy Jaeger is one of the ten best players of all time. But that's that's who I think of when I when I think of you know his complete upside. 
maybe a you know a mini mini Jaeger. Wow, that type, that style. Yeah, um, he was asked about you know why Montreal should pick him at number one, and he said, "I heard they're work looking for a winger." <laughs> For yeah. Suzuki and Caulfield, I'm just sitting here. If they are, I thought it was pretty funny too. He's got a pretty good well, personality. He, his, uh, from all accounts from the, the NHL scouts at the combine, he was he interviewed great. He, uh, I mean, he's always smiling, laughing. Craig Ramsey was saying the same thing about it. He's just the the happiest kid. Uh, but yet he, he's humble, yet he's confident, and I like you know I like that combination. There, there's certainly no issues with his character and Shane Wright too. Shane Wright's a great kid, you know. I know I've been critical of his play on the ice and all that, and that's it's nothing personal whatsoever. I mean, of course, we have it to, never is. You never. know, we have we have to uh, uh, evaluate who we think are the best players, and I just happen to like a couple of guys more. It's it's, it's nothing personal at all. I think the great he's a great kid. And it's one of the reasons why I think he will he'll figure it out to a certain degree that he's got to change some parts of his game, but it's still a question mark. So. You know, there's there's no question marks with Slavkovsky with me. I think uh, personality wise, character wise, leadership wise, uh, and 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 his skill and size, uh, just everything, everything's there. And I and I also think he is the perfect fit for. I mean, I think Montreal tried every winger on the team almost with those two during the season and didn't really find a good fit. And to me, he's the perfect fit. He's the guy that's going to get the puck for the other two. You know. The other two guys and, and make lots of good plays and uh, score a lot of goals. All right, so you can uh, you can probably end up betting on who the Canadians are going to draft the number one overall Betway for the love of the game. Sign up and deposit on Betway for a hundred percent deposit bonus. The easiest sports book for Canadians. E transfers are accepted, or you can of course put down a dollar or two on other props and other futures. Who has the most upside in this draft? Because many believe that Slavkowski is the most NHL ready right now. Others believe that Shane Wright is just very good in a bunch of areas and he'll be very solid. And others believe that the most untapped potential and the highest skill set is Logan Cooley. Would you say yes or no to that? That's a, you know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think he has more upside than Slavkowski. Uh, I also don't think he has more upside than Kemmel. Kemmel, if he, if Kemmel can get back to what he looked like at the start of uh, last season, uh, he, he is, uh, he could be an amazing player. He's going to be a real, whoever ends up getting him might end up getting the best player in the draft. But, uh, you know, it's one of those drafts where they say, oh, it could be the 15th pick that ends up being the best. Personally, I think it's Slavkowski, but there's no guarantees on the, on these guys. You know, it's, it, that's part of the fun of it. But uh, Cooley is, Cooley's a very dynamic, smart player. One yeah. of the best skaters in the draft. Uh, I mean, he, he, you aren't getting a bad pick with him either. There's some really good talent in this draft. Your buddy, Simo Snake Boisvert joined me on the podcast a couple of months ago. And, uh, you know, he wasn't, uh, you know, he, he said at the time that he thought the Canes were better off trading the first pick for six and 12, I believe, that belongs to Columbus and whatever. But he was really high on Connor Geeky. Are you? Uh, I've got him ranked 20th overall, Tony. So probably not, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, again, I mean, the top 20 is, is very is very solid. It's a very solid uh top 20 in this year's draft um did, did a lot of number crunching on him and uh you know he put up decent point totals it, but he had a you know he had a top two center role on a team that scored a pile of goals and he ended up i think his percentage of the team team points that he was in on was like 17 percent and um then i went a little deeper on centers that are that have been picked in the top 15 in the last decade that are six, three or taller and almost to a man they've underachieved. Like there's this, uh, you know, everyone's looking for the ne next big six, three center. That's the next Ryan gets And there aren't many out there. They usually end up disappointing. And I have a feeling that geeky is maybe being overvalued a little bit because he's that six, three, six, four center. 
that wow. uh, I mean, he's going to be a good one. Yeah, I think he's a, probably a number two or a number three center on a, on a team. But uh, as far as him being top five or top ten, I don't see the offensive upside. His skating is a little problematic, and it'll have to come. So there, there are question marks with him. So, no, I'm not as high on him as, as Snake is, but I certainly agree with him with his uh, takes on, on right. All right, okay. Um, who do you think the Montreal Canadiens are going to select? Oh, I think they're taking the Slovak. It's uh, he's in the lineup next year. I think he's playing on the top line and uh, and producing it and contributing right away. Wow! Even though the Canadians have the luxury, of course, going through a rebuild and because that's the way they're going to do it. And by the way, I know a lot of people don't like the word rebuild, and I know a lot of people want the Canadians to get better right away. Folks, I've been preaching this since 2009, and for the longest time, I've had the naysayers say to me. Well, yeah, look at Toronto. They went through, they didn't win, and they took a look at Edmonton, and they didn't win, and take a look at Colorado, and they didn't win. And now Colorado won, so now you can't say that anymore. And one day Edmonton's probably going to win, and you won't be able to say that. And one day Toronto's probably going to win, and then you won't be able to say that anymore. But you know what? Even if they don't win, because only one team wins the Cup every year, you know, in Toronto you get to watch Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and Nylander and Morgan Riley. And, 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 you know, John Tavares and well, they got him as an unrestricted free agent. I get it. But you know, in, in, um, in Edmonton, you get to watch Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl do their thing. Even if they're not going to win the cup, I think it's safe to say it's a pretty nice ride, but you know, Colorado McKinnon drafted number one, Landis Gog, number two, Makar, number four, Byron, number four, Ranton in number 10. I've said this before and I'm going to continue to say it. The recipe to success in the National Hockey League and sustainability is being a bad team for several, several years. If you just want to be bad or terrible for one year and then start patching to get great all of a sudden, the Canadians tried to do it when they drafted Galchenyuk and tried to patch, when they drafted Gokinyemi and tried to patch. It doesn't work that way. It's not sustainable. Right? But, you know, I don't think there's any perfect recipe. I mean, after St. Louis won the, the cup, you know, they didn't have any. You're they right. One top they didn't. And, and neither did Boston. Who had, right. Neither did the Bruins. And, I mean, Why? Tampa Tampa didn't, you know, have any top five picks from the past decade. I mean, you know, they yes, still had Stamkos. And, they had still had Stamkos and, and Hedman. But, I mean, they'd been drafted, you know, they were good and bad before they won the cups. You you're you're right about them. that. But without Stamkos and Hedman, they don't win the cup. And without Washington, right. without Ovechkin and Backstrom, don't win it. And Chicago, without Kane and Taves, no. don't win it. But, and, I mean, Montreal Montreal will have Price and, and Slavkowski. There's two top five picks. So, I mean, maybe that maybe they're the ones that take them to a cup. And a, but, I, I mean, in general, though, yeah. only yes. I mean, They're not going to have I, Price. I don't think Carey Price will ever I, play. I have no idea. But I do know that uh, – um, yeah, I mean, but I don't also don't think that you, you know, they're going to try to lose, you know, they're going to, they're going to ice who, who they have. It'll be a young team. And if they end up being better than, you know, do you suggest that they trade away some other no, good, so good young players you. so that, so that they, so that they're bad. So they get a high pick. I don't think no. that's the way to do it. Either. No, so, so I'll agree with you, Grant. There's no way that they're going to try to lose. They'll never do that. I just right. think that. They're going to end up trading away some veteran players, and I also believe Carey Price will be on an LTIR, so it's going to happen organically, right? If you don't ice a great team, more often than not, you're going to lose games, right? So I, I think that's the way it's going to go down. A lot of it hinges on Price, Tony, and yeah. I I don't know. I have no idea what what the what the future is with Carey. Yeah. Uh, if he if he as you say, if you think that he's LTIR and. Uh, then yeah, I don't know why there's just a lose. gut feel, just a gut feel, you know? right? Yeah, no, and I understand, but I mean, uh, they've got some terrific young prospects going to come into the lineup next year at some point. You know, Gooley, uh, don't underestimate Gooley. Even Jacki Fairbrother, like the defense is going to be better, um, maybe a lot better. It, it might not be next year, and maybe there's growing pains for one more year, but certainly two years from now, I don't. I really don't see them having a f top five pick in two years. I really don't. I, there's just going to be too much talent, young talent. But it might be two years, Tony. And certainly, yes, I don't think that they should, uh, 
you know, uh, I mean, it'd be great to get a Connor Bedard or, or you know, one of those Michkov or one of those guys. Uh, I would love it, but uh, it, it, you know, they are. I think they have two first round picks next year. Yeah, as it is. So you know, they're going to keep building. They got. They're going to have like seven top sixty picks this year, and uh, there's a pile of talent coming. I honestly think after this draft that they're going to be at the top of everyone's list as far as uh, you know prospects the best prospects in the league. So uh, yes and no, I agree to a certain extent with you, but I also think, and Hughes and, and, you know, with it being the market, it is, they're not going to purposely going to try to lose. That's no, sure. but I'll say this. I think they're going to have a top five pick next year. And I'm going to think they're going to mm-hmm. have a top 10 pick the year after. So that's, I, you know, there I have it. I said it. I'm on record. And maybe you and I can, uh, can uh, you know, we can uh, discuss it over lunch or over supper. So you're coming to Montreal for the NHL draft? I am. And he predicts the Montreal Canadiens with the first pick overall will draft Uri Slavkowski. After I went out and I got all those, it's going to be all right, hoodies. <laughs> That's gonna, you know what? That's okay. If uh, Slavkowski is who we think he is. That'll be just fine. Grant McCag, follow him on Twitter. Don't ridicule him anymore uh, <laughs> because he does his homework. There you have it. There's his Twitter handle, Grant McCag, M-C-C-A-G-G. This is the Sick Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Grant, one question for you before we go. You ready? Hit me. The best sports radio host Montreal has ever seen is, was... Oh, boy, that's Tony Manero. Marinero. I was so good, he doesn't even know how to pronounce my family name. Marinero? Is this a joke? Marinero. <laughs> T-O-N-Y-M-A-R-I-N-A-R-O. And Grant. It, and, Antonio. We'll hook up when you come to Montreal. Thanks for doing this, man. Thanks, Tony. Hey, sign up. Recruits.ca and buy his draft guide. Seventeen ninety nine. I'm Marinero. Tell your friends about the podcast. It's sick. Like my curls. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The sick podcast is brought to you by 8.6, intense by nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you.